Welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, we are going to blur the background of this forest portrait image. And this is going to be quite fast and easy. So let's go. As you might know, this is something completely different to the usual videos I upload since I'm a landscape photographer. So we are going to rely on images we find on Unsplash. To follow along, you can find the link for this shot in the description of the video. All right, so how do we blur the background? First off, I do want to separate the subject from the rest of the image. Therefore, let me duplicate that background layer by pressing Ctrl J. And I also want to unlock the background layer by just clicking on this lock right here. Now, I'm going to turn off our copy up here for a moment and focus on the background layer. On this layer, we are going to apply the blur effect. Of course, we don't want to blur the subject, so we want to remove that from our background layer. In this case, this should be pretty easy. We're just going to go to select and here we say subject. You can see Photoshop tries its best to automatically select the subject. It does a pretty good job. It's not that precise, but we can work with that. Now with the subject selection going on, we are hitting Shift F5 to bring up the fill menu. And under contents, we are going to select content aware and just hit OK. Now I am deselecting this part by hitting Ctrl D. And you can see Photoshop did a more or less good job at removing the subject. We still need to fix a few things here. So I'm just using the spot healing brush very, very roughly. Doesn't need to be perfect. Let's just get rid of those strange lines right here. All right, looks much better. If you want to be more precise, you can also use the clone stem tool. Hold on the Alt key, click in an area right next to where the subject was, and then just drag the clone stem tool over it and brush along this part. This can be done very, very roughly, really. Shouldn't be a problem. But here we have our background layer. Then let's bring back the second layer I duplicated in the beginning. And again, we want to use the subject selection under the select menu. This time we do need to be a little more precise. So I'm going to adjust that selection. And here I'm using the quick selection tool. Here it's important to make sure to have add to selection activated to not lose our subject selection. And I'm just brushing over the subject like this. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of the background in the selection. Shouldn't be visible later, but this looks like a very solid selection already. So with the selection done, I'm going to hit the layer mask icon right down there. If I turn off the background layer, you can see we have nicely separated the subject from the background. Now onto the blur effect. I have selected the background layer. Now it's time to head into the filter menu. And here we are going to choose the neural filters. This will open up this new window. If it's the first time you're using it, you might have to download those filters. On the left hand side in this window, we do have a few options of different filters. And since we are going to want to blur the image, we are going to choose the depth blur. Of course, we need to activate it. And on the right hand side of this window, we now have a few options. First off, you can already see a preview on our image, which looks really, really good. But let's adjust this a little more. First, focal distance. If I set the focal distance to zero, we will get the blur from the very near foreground to the back. Of course, we need to adjust the focal distance to our subject, which is a little more in the distance. So let's just bring up the distance right here. We should cover some more distance behind the subject. So I'm going to increase the focal distance a little further. All right, I think that looks really, really good. And of course, we can also play around with the focal range, making the sharp area of the image a little bigger. All right, that looks pretty good. Of course, we do have a box for focus subject, but since we have separated the subject from the background, this doesn't make sense on our background layer. If you go further down, there are a few more options like the blur strength. Let's see if we want to increase it some more. I, of course, don't want to overdo it, but a little more shouldn't be too bad. And we can add some haze as well, which will also bring up the brightness and lower the contrast of the background layer, which I think looks pretty good for an autumn shot like this. So let's just add a little bit of haze. 
And we can also play around with temperature, tint, saturation and brightness. So we have an autumn shot, that means I want to turn up the temperature for some richer warm color tones. Maybe not that much. And let's also bring up the saturation. That looks really, really good. Now we can also adjust the brightness. All right. Of course, you can also use some grain if you want. I don't like this effect, so I'm not going to use this. And after we adjusted all those things, let's just hit OK. And here we have our blurred background layer. Let me turn it off so you can see the before and after version. And you can see that's quite a difference. And it looks super realistic too. So that's a plus. Now, as I said in the beginning, I'm not a portrait photographer, but I know a very popular look is to add some kind of glow in the upper corners of the image. So let me do just that. I am going to add some new layer and let me change the blending mode to soft light. Then I'm grabbing the brush by pressing B and with the brush active, I'm holding down the Alt key and click in a bright area up here just so I can get the exact color tone. I already have lowered the brush opacity. Now I'm just painting in a little glow coming in from the left side. And as you can see, the glow is behind the subject. If I put this layer on top, it would look kind of strange. So I do want to have it behind the subject and maybe add another soft light layer on top of it and just brush in there once. So we get a nicely blended glow effect on this. That's all I wanted to show you for blurring the background. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. So thank you for watching and see you guys next time.